And I just felt like, you know, this club, we're hanging out a lot. We don't really learn a lot outside of just like doing things by experience. So I decided to come up with a statement or a presentation because there are some things that people of like every skill level, I think, should know um, to get better. This is useful for like, even if you're just like, whatever. What are the same run ranks? Part timer? <laughs> is that a rank? Yeah. Um, to too pro fresh. Too pro fresh. Um, it's something that we can improve on. I think everyone. I talked to Kronos about this. Kronos was like my main helper on this. I also talked to another friend. And we put together this little presentation on how to get good at Salmon Run. So I hope you appreciate my amazing visual style I went for here. Amazing oh. UI. Anyway, let's go. I, okay, I assume you all know the basics of Salmon Run, right? Like, everybody knows what Salmon Run is. Everybody knows deliver eggs to basket. Bosses have unique patterns that you have to kill them with. You have 100 seconds, random weapons each time. Yeah, we're all good on that front? Okay. Yes, um, Professor. There are low, middle, and high tides, as we all know. Press A to throw eggs in Splatoon 3. That's a new thing. I know not everybody can get that one immediately. Um, there are night modes, etc. So for the focus of this presentation, it, this is some stuff that will help you excel at any difficulty level. It's not comprehensive, but I did want to cover some good things that the game doesn't necessarily teach you, but is still very valuable and I think isn't too difficult to learn. There are very specific things that you could learn, like map-specific places to go. This is just a more general guide of things to do. So, first thing that you can learn in Salmon Run are some of the basic UI patterns that the game doesn't explicitly tell you about. Um, first main one that confused people for all five years of Splatoon 2 and probably confused people in Splatoon 3, the UI tells you at the start of the round what tide the game is at. So you can see it's high tide, medium tide, low tide. It'll, it'll play a little animation going from your current tide to whatever tide it is. So make sure you get that. Um, you can see what weapon before you spawn in if you're anxious and really need to know, like I am. Uh, your player position of like the four is always going to be the same. So if you know you have X-Flow and you spawn into the next wave and you see a, I don't know, Slattershot Pro there, it'll be, you'll have the Slattershot Pro. You can also use process of elimination to know what weapon you'll have for the Coco Zuno round, because you know you get a different weapon each time. And then, of course, also very important, how many players are alive and dead? That's something that I think everybody knows kind of intuitively, but it's worth pointing out because it's very valuable to check on that every so often, especially if people are split up. Um, another main strategy that you want to have at high level, yeah, that I forget who made that graphic, but it's very good. Why is graphic. he so <laughs> <laughs> um, But boss luring. Uh, kill bosses as close to the basket as possible, generally speaking. This will make sure that you have you can save time on eggs, you'll have enough uh, to go into the next wave, regardless of difficulty. This is more important at higher levels because, you know, higher egg quota. It also helps with coordination because if people are on different parts of the map, then, uh, yeah, people will be split up. If somebody dies, they won't be able to be revived. So generally, you want to bring people closer and people. Salmonids, salmonids are not people. <laughs> yeah. Um, as close to the as possible. Um, generally, for like the far away things, which are the stag bosses in that Penn diagram, you want to send the high DPS weapons off to fight big shots and use mid long range weapons to deal with other guys. Because you really don't want to be moving away from mid. And you want to keep boss lowering uh, constant. Big shots have a lot of HP, so that's why you want high DPS weapons out there. And then every boss has a different um, luring and targeting criteria, which you might know a little bit more intuitively, or you might not know. So it's worth talking through like all of them. Um, Moths, flipper floppers, and flyfish go after the person who's closest to them when their target starts. Um, Moths, it's like right as they go back into the ink. Flipper floppers, I think it's when they like pop out of the ink. And then flyfish is when they start firing. Um, but for flyfish, you know they target two targets. The second one's a random person. And that's always going to be the left blackfish box. I actually didn't know this until Kronos mentioned it. So I guess generally you want to start by focusing on the left box. Whenever you have a splat bomb and have to choose which side to go for, go for the left unless somebody else is like throwing a bomb at the left one. Also, um, at like super high hazard levels, uh, it's sometimes awful to just leave, like kill the left one and leave the right one. Yep. Because uh, if you kill blackfish at high hazard levels, it just spawns another one, which is a pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, God damn. So. 
I forget if I covered that later here, but a maximum of three of each boss head can spawn. So for fly fish, what you can do is just get rid of one side of each and another one can't spawn if it's maxed out at three. And also, um, with 27 seconds left in the wave, no more bosses can spawn. So before 27 seconds, you can like get rid of one half of the fly fish boxes, and then after that, you can just knock them out because there is no more risk of them spawning. Um, Steelheads, Vizzlers, and Flaming Lids work over anyone within a radius around them. Otherwise, they kind of just wander towards the basket and towards players. Um, the reason why Vizzlers are in the quirky category is because they don't actually move until somebody's within, or they move when somebody is not in that radius. Um, if you really want, there are websites like Sam and Learn that uh, show like areas on maps, like a full map and where Vizzlers can land and where you can and can't stand. But that's an important thing to remember is that like, if you want these guys to go after you or come closer to the basket, stay further away. If you want to like, get their attacks out, then uh, get closer. Um, scracker, scrackers, the scrappers go for the last person to attack them. Celios will permanently lock onto one person until that person dies. Um, and then singers will attack the person furthest away from them. That's why you might notice on something like cannons, where the uh, stinger will always go for the person in the cannon because they're usually the furthest away. So generally speaking, try to get them close to the basket. Use that knowledge as much as you can. And then kind of to build off of that, there's abusable enemy behavior from this. So um, slam and lids, as you know, they come down. When you like step underneath their shield, they go wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Um, they kill everything underneath there. Something I like to do is just have them constantly be coming down because it kills any salmonids that are coming in your way, especially uh, boss salmonids. When steelheads die, they explode and destroy anything around them. So if you're a decently long range weapon, take out the steelheads first because they will take out anything around them. Hopefully, steel deals are inconsistent. Um, fish snakes leave big poles when they die. If you really need to escape a bad situation, you can climb up the big poles, but generally you don't want to be going up there because it takes time and you'd rather be spending your time doing something else. Um, you can hit the top middle of fly fish to actually get the both boxes at once with um, a couple different tools, X washer, inkjet, cannons, crab, reef slider, and grisco slosher. Um, it's really difficult and it takes practice, but it is something you can do if you want to save on time. I also think you can do it with, um, what's it called? The, the egg cannons, not just the like yes, yes. normal cannons. You can do it with the egg cannons during combos and no waves as well. So that's a that's something you guys can practice if you want to get better at save and run. Uh, big shot cannons, uh, you know, you can fire eggs away from them. Just make sure you're aware of your teammates because a classic situation is two people go off, fight the big shot, they die. Other two people are kind of left to flounder. Everything targets them, they die. So be careful with them. Um, Stacters, they fly now, like in Splatoon 2. So they will go in a specific direction each wave. I don't know if there's a pattern for them in this game, but you can pay attention to like, I think they come from one side, pick up eggs, and then come back. I'm pretty sure. Or is it they keep going? Yeah, they, they come, come back to their spawn. Yeah, they come back. Yeah. So if that direction that they're coming back to is closer to the basket, let them carry eggs to you. Another good thing is uh, fish sticks. Uh, let snatchers pick up the eggs on fish sticks and then kill them once they picked up all three, all the eggs will drop to the bottom. So that's a very nice thing to do. And then uh, bosses stop spawning when you have 28 seconds left, which goes back into the fly fish thing that I mentioned earlier. Um, here's a key concept that can help everyone improve at Salmon Run. Um, I see a lot of people kind of forget this, but every weapon has a role that it should be occupying. Um, each weapon is good and bad at different things in this list. But there's high DPS, which is good against most things, mostly like high AP bosses and dealing with lesser salmonids, like uh, uh, big shots are the main one that I mentioned. Um, rollers have a weird property where if you wiggle them back and forth, this isn't useful in most multiplayer matches, but it's useful in salmon run. Uh, you can do DPS against a lot of enemies and like create a wall for yourself. This is especially notable during glow flies as well. Um, area, of attack, area of effect attacks like blasters, slosher, of lesser salmonids. Uh, long range weapons will naturally be able to deal with weak points a little bit better. Think like uh, steelhead, steel eel. Um, there are mobile weapons, dualies, shooters, ink brushes. You can deal with far away targets uh, and survive by the basket. So, generally, these will probably be the last people alive and they need to be aware of where their teammates are dying. 
Uh, there are chirping weapons, which today there's the Splash Hot Nova. That's kind of the one thing it's good at. I guess it's also mobile and a little bit long range, but um, it's the classic uh, same thing as multiplayer. You got to turf for your team, make sure that they can get around. And then remember that slap bombs are on every weapon. Those can deal with fly fish and maws. Um, and yeah, so you can kind of figure out intuitively what each weapon is good at in Save and Run, but, um, and that kind of comes with experience as well. But there is a really nice Twitter account, uh, HD has me, I guess, who every uh, Save and Run rotation posts like what weapons are good at and bad at. And I don't have any of their infographics here, but like if you want to check them out, uh, I'm sure they made one for today's rotation, which I probably should have referenced when writing this next slide. This is what today's rotation should look like. Um, I don't know if any of you guys want to play Salmon Run today. I know there's the tournament that some of you guys are doing, and I don't know how much, how popular Salmon Run is in this group. But here's some tips for today's rotation if you want to take those weapon roll ideas as, like, if you want an example for that. Um, dualies. They're your high damage uh, option here. They're mobile. Remember that rolling increases your DPS with most dualies? There's like one that doesn't get increased DPS. Is it like Tetras? It might be Tetras or Spell I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, it's the shortest range weapon of the group. The rest have about similar range. Um, it's your best option for taking out big shots because you don't really have a long range option to help with that. It's good at everything and should be the most flexible and should be aware of what's going on and adapting to what your team needs to do. Splatter Shot Nova kind of sucks in Salmon Run, in my opinion. Because <laughs> it, it's so low damage at two shot small fries. Um, but it can help Nautilus take out bosses because they have similar range. And it can also uh, turf for everyone else. And then it can also focus like Moz and Flyfish because it has Splat Bombs and then Flipper Floppers because it paints well. Um, Nautilus is your highest damage weapon here. It does high damage and bursts. It has like some crazy multiplier in Salmon Run 2, which is surprising because intuitively I feel like Nautilus wouldn't be great in Salmon Run. But it's your general boss slayer. It can deal with pretty much anything. It's also helpful with big shots. It's not great at turfing, so that's where Nova needs to come in, as I mentioned earlier. It needs time to recharge. Be careful about your ink tank because it's very easy to forget about that if you're using Nautilus. And then it should not be using flat bombs like at all. Uh, normal Nautilus gameplay, you don't want to use your sub weapon because you're too busy charging up and firing and maintaining your charge. You can go through an entire ink tank without uh, reaching an empty uh, circle or whatever you want to call splatling charges, but uh, slap bombs are not your duty here. And then your last one is Rapid Blaster, which does AoE attacks. And it's pretty good at dealing with lesser salmonids along with the dualies. It should be focusing on the stingers and fish sticks because you can just kind of aim in their general direction. Bam, half of it's dead in one shot. Uh, but then it can also help deal damage to most bosses. So today's rotation is kind of like a chip damage comp for thinking like normal competitive uh, analogies because you have a bunch of similar range things that don't do a ton of damage together, but or don't do, don't do a ton of damage individually, but together they can take out bosses pretty easily. Um, night modes. So there are a bunch of different night modes in Salmon Run, and there's some specific tactics people should keep in mind when dealing with them because it's very easy to get overwhelmed in some of these. And it's it, like low flies and grillers, people die a lot. Like it's the scariest mode for most people, especially in freelance. Um, for glow flies, make sure you're alternating who shoots. Because if you're all shooting at once, and then everybody has to recover ink at the same time, that's, you're, you're dead. <laughs> like, there's nothing better you can do. If you have a roller or umbrella, um, you can solo the entire horde by just kind of standing there and walking slowly if you're a roller. It doesn't consume as much ink because I think distance determines how much ink is consumed. Also, if you're standing still, even if you sell the roller down, you recover ink. And if you, and yeah. if, if, if small fire pushing you forward, you'll still do damage. Yeah. So, yeah. But you okay. need to be moving just a little bit to actually engage in damage. Yeah, you need to move a little bit with roller. Yes. Um, but you can solo a lot of things in glow flies. Um, one thing I see often in glow flies and also grillers is people just kind of hang on a wall a lot. I wouldn't recommend that as good as like a last ditch resort. But like most of the time you can, with most comps, if it's not like an all random rotation, they balance it so you can take out a horde of. Uh, uh, what are they called, chum, mm -hmm. uh, as they approach you. So just like focus on shooting and alternating who does what. Um, for gushers, if you're in computer science, no computer science terms, use a binary search. Um, <laughs> open gushers on opposite sides of the map. Oh. 
and you remember that the height of the fountain that you open will determine how close you are to the goal lead. Because remember, your uh, objective yeah. is to find the goal lead in the series of gushers. So something I like to do is throw a splat bomb as far as I can to whichever one's in the corner, have somebody else or just myself take out one on the opposite end. Whichever side's higher, go to that side, search around there. And basically your goal is to kind of split the map in half. It's like, so you find which half of the map, and then quarter and then eighth, the goalie is on. Um, also, remember, when the goalie is like out and running around, rollers can stand in the way. And also, splatlings are busted on this mode. Please have your charge ready once the guy starts running. Um, mothership, general weapon roll thing, long range weapons should be taking out the Chinooks, which are the guys that fly down with the little baskets, the swan guys. And also remember that whale and crab are great at shooting the ship. And they drop a lot of eggs, especially if you aim at the top with crab. Um, and it also kind of just pops it off immediately. But that's, that's a good general strategy, especially if you're on like wave three and nothing better to do with your specials. Um, cannons, slow weapons get into cannons, fast weapons get eggs. So many people jump into cannons without knowing what weapon they have. So they're, they kind of just leave like the E-leader out of the cannons. Please don't do that. <laughs> Please be considerate of what other weapons people have. If you have the sploosh, you should be getting the egg because you literally travel faster because you're lightweight. Um, and then for fog, which is just kind of the normal way, but goldies can spawn and everything's foggy, let the uh, goldies come as close to that basket as possible because if you if it drops like 10 eggs far away, you can't really tap wise on that very much. So get it literally as close to the basket as possible. I'm talking next to it, not like a short swim away, like literally next to it. Because you can't, they're slow, they, they're dumb, they just attack the closest person to them. And then I took the liberty of going into each salmon run map and posting my favorite uh, griller and glow fly spots. Um, I don't know if these are the best, but these are my favorite, and these are the ones that I've seen success with. So Ruiner's Bay, um, rulers will usually come from the bottom and then we'll either come up this side or this side. So what you can do with rulers is you can stand here in the middle, kind of right in front of the basket, and if a ruler comes close to you, you just jump down and then it turns around and is stuck like an idiot. And you just jump back and forth and it can't do anything. <laughs> so that's a good strategy. Um, for glow flies, I think right in front of the bridge, right here, is the best because all the salmon, all the salmon is, will filter right down the middle, right here. If you stand back further, they will come down both sides and can very easily overwhelm you, especially if you're not super coordinated with your comp. So that's why I think in front of the bridge is a common, or is like the best spot to go to. At some point, um, I'm just uh, wondering if this is the case. Um, if you're still there and you're trying to funnel, what if they go? Uh, is there a, part, a point where they go around, regardless, or? Uh, it's all based on like your distance forward, mm -hmm. because they should all be spawning like either down here or down here. Mm -hmm. um, if you're too far back, I don't know exactly where the point is. I think a general good policy is the grates. Like once you're on the grates or further back, they will start coming around. But if you're in front of the grates, I don't think they do. Um, okay, hydro plant fillers up here. Like I, I don't know how good this image is. But like, you guys get a good sense of where that is on the map. Like I'm on the, I guess, facing out, back left. Um, Rillers can come up this side and go over the edge, so you usually want to drop down for a little bit, make sure they come down the bottom, so then they have to go up this little ramp here. Um, and then you can shoot them there, it's really close to the basket. It's really nice. For glow flies, you want to kind of be in this back corner, because if you go up there, you have the same issue where like half can come from this side and half can come from this side and you can get overwhelmed. So coming over here, so everything funnels kind of right here or right here. It's the best strategy. Uh, spawning grounds, drillers, and glow flies are in the same spot. It's just on top by the basket. It's close to the basket. Everything funnels down one direction, generally speaking. It's pretty manageable. There's a wall right there if you can panic. And then, um, God, what, what, what's the name of that stage? Soft guy. Soft guy. Um, Grillers stay up top because they all have to like come around the big spiral in the middle, Spiral Mountain, Benjo Kazooie. Um, <laughs> for glow flies, top of the mountain is a decent option. My problem with it is all the eggs are so far away from the basket that you have to throw them in. So my favorite spot is actually right next to the basket. If you go down 
the ramp far enough, they won't split off around kind of this side and this side. They'll only come up here. So you can focus all your fire in one direction. You're closer to the basket. And everything should work. It's not a place a lot of people know about, but it's a place I think a lot of strong players know about. So those are my favorite spots for these night boats. And I think they're worth remembering. Um, special weapons. <laughs> There's a lot of debates over when to use the special weapons. There's not really a super clear answer. There's arguments for use them earlier if you don't want to lose rank. Use them during wave one and wave two. If you die during wave three, there's no way you lose rank. Some people argue save it for wave three because it's the hardest wave. Some people say save it for dire situations like high tide, certain night waves, if you need to just get out of something. Um, I usually lean towards like these two is just make sure you have it for when you need it. But um, also, don't be too conservative, because if you don't use it fast enough, you don't use any of your specials, regardless of what it is, fast enough, you won't get benefit from it. Um, but ultimately, like it's still up for debate on what the best strategy will be. If you're overfishing, it'll be a different uh, thing than if you're just playing normally in two minutes. Um, and then I sorted each special into three categories. You'll notice Smoothie Bomb is on here twice. That's not a mistake. Um, Reef Slider, Booyah Bomb, and Inkjet are good for surviving. Um, if you think you're going to die, or if your teammates are dying, uh, use it. Stay alive. Make sure you don't lose. Kill the Whale and Crab are good at taking out specific threats. I mentioned the mothership, the mothership earlier, but also there's like fly fish, stingers. One killer whale will kill a fly fish of the three that you can send out. Um, grillers, Kalko Zuna. It's high DPS, but very focused. So those are some of the best places to use them. And especially since you don't have to get super close to like a stinger or a fly fish, you can use it from far away, especially with killer whale. And then triple A strike, Booyah Bomb, and Weight Breaker are good for area control. They're big area effect damage things. If everyone's dying, or if you're losing control near like the basket or something, just use them. Get rid of everything that's there. Um, and yeah, revive teammates with them. Weight Breaker especially is super good at that. Kohozuna. A lot of people don't know how to deal with Kohozuna. I have a friend who has been, I don't think he's beaten Kohozuna once. He's made it a whole saga on his Twitch channel. Um, <laughs> And I keep trying to teach him what to do, and I don't really have a good way to teach him what to do, aside from Twitch chat, which is not helpful enough. No. But generally, this, the best strategy, I think, is you want your most mobile high DPS weapon to kind of lure around the codes and, and constantly deal damage to it, whittle down its health bar slowly, while everyone else is off killing bosses, throwing eggs. Um, make sure you press this way if you kill a bunch of bosses and their eggs near you, so then the person who's luring the Kohozuna around and has the aggro on them can go towards you, so you don't have to like make any treks to throw eggs in at, or throw eggs at the Kohozuna. And then the mobile DPS weapon should be just kind of going in circles around the map. So think like you want the one guy in the Kohozuna over on one side, everyone else is taking out bosses up over here. Kind of rotate around, take out bosses over here. You just kind of keep going in that cycle. I think. If you go too fast, uh, he'll lock on to someone else. If you go too slow, you're not using your eggs effectively. Um, and then use golden, you can use golden eggs to damage other bosses too, rather than just throw them at Kohozuna. Um, Flyfish and Scrappers are particularly weak to the cannon. Scrappers will die in, or not die, they'll break down in one hit from a golden egg. And then Flyfish, you can throw it into the Flyfish basket and that one will break. So if you have like enough ink for a slap bomb, throw a slap bomb into one, throw a golden egg into the other. Remember that golden eggs do not cost ink in the Kokozuna round. That's another important thing that I don't think too many people know or are super aware of. Um, and if you're just a slower weapon in general, make sure like you can use golden eggs a little bit more often to help out deal with other bosses. Because it is just a free source of damage. Not free. But, you know, <laughs> if, if, if it's between that and dying, then throw an egg to deal damage. And then use your specials appropriately in codes and rounds. Um, you get one special for the extra wave. Some people don't really understand this. They think they have to save their special for the codes and rounds. They don't. You will always have one, regardless if you go in with two, one, or zero. Um, and then generally, you want to be using your specials in the same way as before for five teammates. Uh, get area control, survive, uh, target specific enemies for like the three different categories. Killer whales should still be used on flyfish. But um, crabs specifically, 
I think the safest strategy is just to use it immediately because if there are more bosses on the map, then you're more likely to just get kind of smothered with a bunch of other attacks. Uh, versus if you use it at the start, you can use all your high DPS and do like, I don't know the exact amount, but I want to say like 15 to 20 percent of a Coco Zuna South meter if you're just constantly firing at it. So crap specifically, use it early. That's my note. Um, and then online resources, if you want to like learn more things about Salmon Run. There are Discord servers, there's the general Salmon Run server, and then there's the overfishing server. Overfishing is just kind of trying to get as many eggs as you can if you're not aware. Um, and there are plenty of people to talk to, plenty of places to like find people to play with. Um, there's some websites, I don't think, they haven't been updated to Splatoon 3 yet, but I think they're working on it. There's SalmonLearn and SalmonLearn.inc. SalmonLearn just has a bunch of different general guide things. SalmonLearn.inc is the, um, wait no, SalmonLearn.inc is the one that gives you a bunch of general guide resources. SalmonLearn has like maps of like all the five of Splatoon 2 maps and a bunch of situations you can practice. Like if a drizzler spawns here, where do you need to go to lure it towards the basket? Uh, if a Goldie, on like Goldie Rush, they have like algorithms that you can follow, things like that. On Twitter, there are a bunch of different accounts. I couldn't possibly name them all. But uh, some of the biggest and most helpful for me are um, Grisco VP. They're just kind of like a general salmon run themed account. They'll retweet a bunch of different resources. Um, there's HG Hasme, which I mentioned earlier, who makes it like what well, each weapon is good at in each salmon run rotation. And then um, a player that uh, I know kind of is Hawken, who does similar overfishing type things. Uh, there's also YouTube channels like Brian. Brian, I think, is the most popular salmon run overfishing person, like generally speaking. And then, of course, you can just kind of look up salmon run guides or salmon run overfishing. The reason I mention overfishing so much in these resources is that the best players will probably have the best advice. Um, but you can just look up general advice as well. It just might not be as thoroughly valuable to you, depending on what skill level you're at with Salmon Run. So yeah, that's my little Salmon Run presentation. I hope you guys learn some things about Salmon Run. If I hope you guys are interested in Salmon Run, I can put these to uh, use. Are there any questions or other tips that you have for Salmon Run? Oh, if you have like something that does a lot of damage, just shoot the code Zuna if you're not like killing bosses. like. Hydra's like the biggest one, but like in this rotation it'd be like Ghoulies and Nautilus both do like a fuck ton of damage. Yeah. And like, I, there's a video, I can link it in the Discord, that like, you, even if you kill all the bosses, it's like, you need like 55 eggs of executive BP to kill Kozuna, so like, you need main weapon and special damage to kill it, especially when I kill it like fast. So, don't, don't hesitate, just use your weapon to kill it if you have a weapon that does a lot of damage. If you don't, don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the, that Twitter account that you links usually will tell you which ones are good for killing go as well. Yeah, exactly. And then especially the Grisco weapons, like oh, yeah. Grisco Charger, Grisco Bow. I think Grisco Splatana, I actually didn't get to play with that one very much when it was happening. But those are really good at dealing damage with the Cocos in it because they're just so high DPS. Splatana's very slow, so eh. Yeah, no, no, no. But Grisco Blaster is good. Grisco Blaster, all right. Anything else? Any other fun salmon run facts? <laughs> All right, that's my presentation. Woo!